What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over dying and respawning. So since we started working on the AI tutorial, and the AI is going to actually be hurting us soon, I figured we needed to knock out damage and dying plus respawning. Now, this respawn is specifically going to happen right away, it's not going to reload the scene or anything. We will get into loading the scene or, you know, reloading after death, whatever. But this is more like just how to get the location you want to respawn at and what to do once you've lost all your health. So remember, these little spikes on the ground are my little traps. So as I hit them, my health bar in the top left goes down. Once I hit zero, it respawns me in essentially what we recorded as the beginning of the room here, or the checkpoint, or whatever. Right now it's a hard-coded value, but this will be what we use later on to determine where we should spawn. Then when I come back over, you see I have full health, but I can take damage yet again. Okay, to get into it today, let's step back into the code. Now before I get started here, uh, just note this is, I believe, the 8th episode of the first person shooter tutorial, somewhere around there, so if you want to catch up, I'll leave an iCard in the top right corner right now that has a link to the first episode of the first person shooter tutorial. Feel free to check that out. And then you can get caught up. Okay. Otherwise, let's continue. So for your first person shooter tutorial character, whatever your base character is, we need to basically have functionality that can occur when we die and what we want to do when we respawn. Now, our, we already have our health, and our health already is depleting when we take damage, but nothing was happening when we went to zero or below. What we need to do is add two functions here, literally called die and respawn on my side. So. Uh, make sure they're blueprint callable. These are just so you can call them within blueprints, easy enough. I'm going to actually backspace these because Unreal sometimes, or Visual Studio sometimes likes the auto format, but I don't really like the way it auto formats, so there we go. But yeah, just add die and respawn. You could technically do these in the same function. I'd recommend having two because there are times you might want to die and not respawn. For example, if we're doing a load, you're not going to respawn right away. You're going to die, have a little death animation, maybe, you know, play a little music, whatever. And then we'll reload the scene, then we'll call respawn. Or we will die, but then if we're, you know, we can only respawn under these conditions and things like that. So I'd recommend having two functions. Make sure they're blueprint callable, both of them. And you're good to go with the header file here. Let's go into the CPP file and write these functions. Okay, so make sure you just write <laughs> void your character, die, and all I'm doing right now is calling respawn. We will most likely do something with this in the future to add a little animation or something like that. Then, in respawn, we're going to be setting our health back to the default value and setting our actor location. So. Set actor location is a default function in Unreal. You don't have to write this. Set actor location. But it takes an F vector in, and we need to give it an F vector. So if you go back into your header file, scroll down to wherever you have your variables, and make an F vector respawn location. And as the comment says, it's just the position to respawn the character. That's literally all it is. It basically gives the world coordinates where we want the player to respawn. Now, when we have checkpoints and such, we'll actually save out the exact location the player was when that checkpoint saved, or a predetermined location for that room that we want to save out. For now, we're just going to hard code this. Make sure you have this U property that's edit anywhere, blueprint read write. You don't need the category, but category equals respawn. That's just the way to find it easier in Blueprint. I would recommend uh, making sure you can see this in Blueprint because we will be able to access it for file writing, file reading, and also any sort of transforms we do with the character, which we'll probably be doing in Blueprint. Okay, once you're done with that, we can continue to the CPP file and make sure in the constructor you set your value. So you can set it all to, to to all zeros, and you'll see it'll still work. For me, all zeros is not in the scene, like in the actual area where we want to respawn. So if you want to hard code it to a value where you can actually use it, click on where your character is to start. 
go to his transform location and grab these three values and put them in. Negative 351, negative 99, and 375 for me. I put those three values in to make my F vector, and there you go. When I die, I will respawn at the location that I started. So, to wrap up, go back down to your respawn function and put in your new variable, respawn location. So, once we die, we're going to instantly call respawn, which is going to reset our health and then reset our location to the initial location. Lastly, what we need to do is have the ability to die. So, die won't function if we don't ever call it. What we have to do is essentially, if we have zero health or less, then we die. We were already doing a check for if health is less than zero and equals zero. Basically to say, if health goes below zero at any point, then just make sure we're at zero. We don't have a negative health. So once health does that, just go ahead and call die. You can also just check, probably a better solution in case you happen to run out exactly on 0.0f is to check if it's great or less than or equal to zero. I'll probably add that in now. And then just a reminder. I know it's easy to forget. Make sure you go to build up top and build solution. Wait for your, your output log to finish. But yep, make sure you're calling die here. Die will call respawn, set your health back, and set your location back. Those are the main things you need to die and respawn. Okay, now when you go back into Unreal, you can see that we have our location set here and we have our character that we want to use make sure you hit compile that way you can get your code changes over to unreal there we go you'll see compile complete and when we play you'll notice that we can take our damage like i showed in the beginning of the video and then when we're done we respawn at the start of the scene now one thing you will notice is that the enemies like these guys and the the traps don't respawn so see if i if i were to die now which i technically can't because i use all the spikes but if i were to die they wouldn't respawn you saw only two were left when i respawned so what we'll have to do there is there's, there's two ways we can handle this and we will handle it in a future episode but we can either handle it to where we have a predetermined amount of enemies again that happen to come out or whatever traps that happen to come out at any point and once they're used they're gone and when you respawn it just reloads that scene with the default values or we can have it to where they are kind of random so you have a little bit of variation between lives not a huge deal we'll, do, we'll be doing videos on both because i think they're both good features to have in fact we'll probably be doing one video on checkpoints and and loading but other than that uh, the next thing we're going to go into is making the AI actually look at us constantly as we move, or like every so often when we move at least. That way it can kind of follow us around and aim at us. And then we're going to want to be able to have it shoot at us as well. So expect those episodes in the future, both the, the respawning with the checkpoints and the loading, and also enemies attacking you, looking at you and attacking you. We'll get more into that as it becomes necessary. Anyway, guys, I'm Sean the Bro. Hopefully this tutorial helped you. If it did, please subscribe. It helps me more than anything else you can do for the channel right now. Um, basically, it just shows your support and that I'm teaching you and doing a good job and not just giving you some terrible code that doesn't work. So that would be a bad job. <laughs> If you did have any issues with this video or with any of the other videos that I have, feel free to join the Discord community. I can't leave an iCard here because uh, YouTube doesn't accept Discord iCards or Discord links in iCards. But if you're interested in joining, we can help you with any issues you've had with pictures and videos or just over text. So I'll be happy to help you out. There's plenty of members who are also happy to help you out if you had any problems doing this. So no problem. Feel free to join. I'll help you out there. Lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash johnthebro27, you'll be able to come hang out with me and watch me fail at Dark Souls or succeed at Dark Souls somehow, and then play some Resident Evil 4 and find out how annoying Ashley is. Anyway, guys, like I said, I'm Sean the Bro. Thank you so much for watching. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.